Well, good day, viewers. Here I am on the Gibb River Road, and um, I haven't been here for 40 years. But uh, last time I was here, I come from Derby to the Clumber Mission Road, rip down the Clumber Mission Road as far as Dugan Station, do a bit of work as a station hand there for a while. Now, um, so this time around, I want to do it the other way. I want to do the section I haven't done, which is from Kununurra back down to the Clumber Mission Road and hopefully as far as Mitchell, Mitchell Falls. But anyway, here we are on the Pentecost River and um, as you see there's the car set up. I've, I've actually ditched the caravan first time for a long time and felt a little bit funny about doing that but um, but um, went through the first night and comfortable had everything, no rain because it's uh, WA, not the East Coast which rains in the top end all the time. Fucking rains all the time. Anyway, I won't go there because I tend to go on. Um, Anyway, I'll show you the Pentecost River and the crossing, and um, I've took a little bit of a footage earlier on of some vehicles. There's caravans that go through here, and um, and um, I'm in two minds whether to do a disprove as to how difficult the Gibb River Gibb River Road is, because in my opinion it's just another gravel road. And um, I've just completed the Tanami track myself from Alice up to Buddy uh, Halls Creek. That's just another gravel road. Everyone makes a big deal about these things, and I am sure, there you go, I'll decide how I'm doing it. I am sure everyone likes to say they've done it and big note themselves, and they're just not that fucking hard. But anyway, let's have a look. All right, right the way up to the Pentecost from the other side. I don't know whether you can see, but I will try to zoom in. Yeah, that's Blacktop, right the way up to here. And, um,. There we go. Good. Awesome. Yeah, it's black top right the way from Kamnara up to here. And now from here onwards, it does be gravel. So let us have a little look around and have a look at the river. And um, this is the crossing. All right. And um, I've watched a few caravans and um, go through here as well as other vehicles without caravans. And as you can see, following the fence post across, it's about half wheel depth, so probably about 12 inches deep. And inches, there are crocs here. We had some um, guys out with some spotlights last night and they were taking some shots, uh, I mean spotting around the place. And as you see there's, of, uh, with high powered spotlights and yes you could see the eyes of the crocs out here. So I think so, I won't walk too, walk too close to the edge. And um, I'll put on pause a bit. And, you know, this is the little nook that I've uh, parked the ute in. And um, as I was saying before, as I was saying before, I was a little bit apprehensive about doing it because not about doing the track about ditching the caravan because I haven't uh, done a journey without the caravan for so long and I really have become accustomed to the comforts of the caravan and um, it's very much set up like a home on wheels where this is a little bit more rudimentary but uh, first night was really good movies on the old phone that I've got stored which is stored and um, very comfortable night's sleep but anyway there you go. This is this is the view from the back of my back of my Ute across the Pentecost River. And as I said, there are crocodiles there. They they were seen last night with guys with spotlights. So anyway, there we go. Let us go and just prove how difficult this bloody road is. It's just a gravel road. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's all it is. halfway across I realised that the lady um, who's asked me to film her and I have lent her my phone to film me forgot to give me my her phone so you get to see me go there and back so I can pick up the phone and then uh, go back again and record the lady. Okay viewers here I am at the Coburn Rangers lookout now uh, they're filling with the phone and it doesn't look like it's going to take a very good picture. But, um, Zoom in in a second. But, uh, those mountain ranges across there, they sort of like go up on the side, third class, um, 
type thing. So let me see if I can I'll fiddle around with it and see if I can get some get some footage. But I don't think it. I can't promise anything. Now I've gone into five times view. If I go any bigger than that, it just blows the whole thing. You just sort of see the ridge line there where it goes up and appears to plateau across the top. But um, I think you need something a bit better than a phone camera. Well, good day, viewers. Here I am on the Columbia Mission Road. This is the most furthest north point I've been on this. Oh, no, it's not. There's a creek down the road. Went down to a creek, swimming in that. Um, I was going to say furthest north point I've been on the Columbia Mission Road. But there is a creek down the road we went swimming in. We used to. And yeah, that's Doongan Station. Last time I stood at this gate was 40, 41 years ago. And um, I come to this buddy cattle station as a uh, station hand, jackaroo, whatever you want to call it. And I was probably the worst, world's worst horseman um, on the planet. But um, yeah, I just wanted to have a look at it. Bit of a memory thing. Um, also a little bit of information for those who um, are looking at information going through this road. Um, the Clumber Mission Road is a major improvement upon what it was 40 years ago. The same with the Gibb River. Um, the, they both have their moments, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the biggest problem with the Columbia Mission Road is corrugations. They're heavily corrugated from lots of traffic because every man needs dogs up here. Um, plus obviously trucks, supply truck, cattle trucks, that type of thing. And going through there, but um, it's a, just a wide gravel road now. I've been cruising, sitting on top of the corrugation, so to speak, at about 85, 90 k's all the way through here. And... Um, and um, you couldn't do that before. It was a single lane. You know, it's a it's a wide gravel road. It's quite, and um, it was just a, it was a single lane with lots of sand patches, like driving on the on a beach or something, soft sand, you know, and everything before when I was here last. And the Drysdale River has a concrete pad going through there, or a causeway going through it. So I went through looking for the Drysdale and going, surely I haven't passed it already. I don't remember it being this far north. And the only one that had a looked like a major river was um, there was a concrete pad through. There was none of that before. I went through with HQ Holden. I, you were, it was just normal riverbed, and it was rough. And I was up to the door handles on the HQ with water, and you know it was a lot rougher and a lot harder to get to up here now. So, um, so very surprised. Very easy to get to in comparison. Um, it's still a mission still a mission so there's still a centre of adventure for those who think there is and uh, like that type of thing and um, but anyway north is undiscovered country Mitchell Falls is the objective crossings of yesteryear. Well here we are at the last major water crossing and um, as you see it's not really that difficult, it's 6 to 10 inches deep, uh, it's a very rocky base so it's quite firm and um, pretty straightforward crossing. Anyway we'll continue on down to the Mitchell Falls to see what we see there. Good day viewers, thought I'd show a little bit of the video, a little bit of video of the walking trail down to the Mitchell Mitchell River Falls or the Mitchell Falls, whatever they're called. And um, if I stop for two seconds, I'll show you a bit further forward. And um, that's the track. Believe it or not, I actually call that a track. And here's the ridge bike, you see, just fly the helicopter over here. Too easy, eh? Well, viewers, we've got this little rock encampment. And right beside it is one of the waterfalls, water holes I should say, a billabong. Right on the side, on the way to the Mitchell Falls. And yeah, more helicopters. And if you walk over here, there's a sign there that I walk past says be careful of the cliffs. And they're right about a cliff. And if you walk over here, stony, you know, stony, but uh, rocks there as well, which 
I can only imagine that he flow a lot of water from the top here. Yeah, so I imagine that when the wet season is coming, that water hole which was over there that I showed you a minute ago would flow over the top of all these rocks and turn into a waterfall and go all the way down to there. As you see, well, maybe if I move over a bit, just get a bit more on film. Put the arm out, I'm not going to get too close to the edge. You see where the water continues to channel down through there. But um, even down there, that's actually quite a large, that's actually quite a large um, um, body of water down there. It looks quite deep from up here. And um, yeah, very spectacular in the wet, I would imagine, but inaccessible in the wet. Well, here I am doing the obligatory swim. And um, the voices you can hear in the background, maybe, are uh, people that are off camera that we're chatting with. It's, um, anyway. That's enough of me swimming. Let's go have a look at the uh, Mitchell Falls, which is what we're here for. Well, good day, viewers. I'm sitting at an outcrop here at um, Mitchell Falls, and you can see the three the three pools here. But um, there doesn't seem to be an access point. There's nowhere where it looks like you could actually get down there and have a swim or you know floating. But anyway, it is what it is. And I'll zoom in a bit. That's the top pool there, and if we have a look at the top there, you'll see we're in the centre of the screen. There's a little bit of white water there, that's running down the side there, then it comes down, you look closely, there's a waterfall there which flows into the, the top pool there. Then you get that middle pool, and then you get the bottom section there. So, um, so that's the um, Mitchell uh, Waterfalls, Mitchell Falls. Well, this is a bit of footage of um, the Mitchell Falls Access Road. It's actually as I'm heading in, but I'm using it to show heading out. Um, that pretty much takes care of um, the Mitchell Falls and um, everything that was there, and the journey on the Gibb River Road up to there. And I says, but this is where the fun is about to begin. Remember when I said earlier on, I'm going to disprove as to how tough it is? Well, this come back and bite me on the ass. Watch and see. Well, you've seen it. The Columbia Emission Road that comes off the Gibb River Road in the Kimberley, top end of WA, claims another one. Uh, she's currently held on by one bolt. And um, I've put the buddy um, fan belt back on just to hold it in place while the tow truck comes out, which I've been quoted at just over five grand to get it towed uh, back to Columbia. It's a 900k return journey. And I'm um, stuck on the corner of the Clumber Emission Road and the Mitchell River Fall, Mitchell, um, Nash, Mitchell Falls National Park Road, the turn off right there. And um, uh, yeah, so all of the bolts, with the exception of one, are sheared off, and so they all have to be drilled out and re tapped so I can put bolt, re bolt the bracket assembly back in place. Uh, gotta love it, don't you? Okay, good day viewers. Well, I've ripped out the buddy um, assembly holding the vacuum pump, the alternator, and the buddy belt tensioner. And these are the bolts that buddy snafuied it, actually sheared. I'll show you the bloody engine in a minute. So, these two here, these bolt through the water pump into the block. Uh, one's broken, one's okay. Um, and these two bolts here, right, these ones actually just sheared off. And half of the bolt is still in the head of the um, car. So if we walk around here, yes, excuse this extremely poor camera work, but um, this is life on the road. One, right there, if I take it off her, that is where it is actually sheared and inside the head is the other half of the bolt. And uh, there's the other one. I'll take the light off a little bit so you can see it. And again, bolt sheared off inside the head. Now, um, that's the broken bolt, and that's the bolt that's not broken. And um, and um, anyway, 
that's why it immobilised me. So I um, can't believe it. Yeah, I cater for most things. I have spare parts of all sorts of stuff um, in here. But one thing I don't have a spare parts of is a drill, an easy out set, and a um, and um, possibly a set of bloody uh, thread taps to clean the threads out, depending on the condition of them. So. Um, so it took a fair bit before it would buddy um what's that mean? but I suppose all these corrugations over the years that I've taken this thing on. And um, I just wait till the guys going past so they know it's alright. And um but eventually it catches up on you. Sort of thing. So it is what it is. Joys of travel in the outback.